Hello and hope we're all doing well. Welcome back to the NARLCS Breakdown. We have one week left until relegation teams have actually been decided, along with that, of course, our playoff teams, so on and so forth. And it's going to get real hectic as of this last weekend. Some big upsets across North America as well as Europe. I will break down Europe in a few hours' time in a separate video. But I hope you guys all enjoy NARLCS this past weekend. We now only have one king left, that being Team NRG, which I don't think many of us can now deny is the best team in North America, the only remaining undefeated team as well. G2 and Cloud9 both fall this past weekend but along with that we still have easily maybe four even five teams in the chance for actually being put down to the relegation of those bottom two teams out there if you include space station five teams still have an easy chance to be of those bottom two teams out there and besides that as well we still have some huge upsets as space station even if you include them in your bottom five right now and as a chance to be relegated they did manage to take down cloud nine this past weekend in a very stunning matchup but as always i hope you guys all enjoy let's break down our first award that being the MVP players and I have plenty for all of you guys. The forces which I'm going to say is Justin. I think you could easily put it in Garrett G's hands as well but NRG this past weekend just looked very dominant against G2 if you guys did see that series. If you have not seen it somehow go watch the VODs. It in itself was a highlight reel between those two players that being Justin and Garrett. I'm going to give the slight edge to Justin but again I think both these players the whole entire team chemistry wise has not lacked thus far especially these past few weekends and so I personally will say Justin. A lot of you guys might say Garrett definitely deserves though of an MVP overall his performance it was it was just nutty to say the very least now also my second MVP though has to be Illusion because Ghost Gaming also going to be a team of the week they have saved themselves this past weekend but Illusion it seems he has finally found his role all around defensively but especially offensively I'm not really whether really sure of the internal details here if Lethemir has given off uh, his offensive role to Illusion it did seem this past weekend though they have somehow found a chemistry they have lacked the first three weeks as well looking absolutely amazing uh, I'll Although Illusion, I think really the key uh, linchpin of this team over here, definitely he was the reason why they picked up two wins this past weekend. And for now, they stay out of the relegation matches. And also, very last team MVP out there uh, between two players on EG as well. I would say Classics or Corrupted G. Now, Corrupted for my reasonings here, he actually had two of their overtime goals in Game One and Two, winning the uh, winning those games. I guess you could say eventually. But Classic as well, especially if you watch that series. Yes, it was a sweep, but also a very very fun series to watch. Classics, Game 3, a bump, and alongside that, a demolition fest. It was it was incredible to see both those guys in that roster as well. To me, definitely deserve an MVP. So my five MVPs this week, this is the biggest list of MVPs I've had since our Week 1 breakdown. Actually, of all the weeks so far by a landslide, Justin, Garrett, Aleutian, Corrupted, or Classics. Either one, you guys can choose in your comments down below who you think deserved the MVP this past weekend. But there was a lot of great showmanship across many teams out there. Now, also, speaking of teams in into our teams of the week. I mean, first of all, it has to be Ghost. They have now won their first two victories of the entire season all in this past weekend, saving themselves for now in relegation matches. And likely, if you're going to give Splice that, probably that last place spot, I think a lot of us see them there. Currently, they have a really good chance to at least maintain their RLCS spot, which is a huge accomplishment given the recent roster change before the season did begin. And they have certainly found something this past weekend. Yes, the two wins are over teams that are arguably in our bottom half as well still. Space Station near the top of that bottom half as well. They also go on to beat Cloud9, but I'm not really sure where I see that team right now. And they also beat a Rogue who is not struggling offensively, but have struggled in recent weeks and are still towards the bottom of that table, along with many teams out there. So take what you want from these two victories, but Ghost have now won these two games when they needed to, and they have seemingly found some sort of chemistry to get those wins. They are certainly a team of the week, alongside a team who never really struggles chemistry-wise, that being NRG. I cannot complain. Yes, Game 3 against G2 was pretty slow and pretty uh, close. Game 1 two and four though the games they did win to beat them 3-1 they just looked so uh, it was one of the best games one of the best series I've seen so far out of NRG all season long and that's why they are also a team of the week and then speaking of upsets out there has to be Space Station they take down your formerly number one team in America you take them NRG and Cloud9 probably won two right now but still former world champions and definitely probably struggled offensively this past weekend but that was because Space Station defensively all around offensively as well they looked very very good against Cloud9 and against uh, Cloud9 being one of the best offensive teams in North America, it was Space Station who managed to score the first goal of all four of those games. Incredible stuff from all three of these teams, and that's why there certainly were my teams of the week. And a quick warning for plays of the week, I usually kind of diversify these across many teams out there. I had a Kronovi clip, I think, from his game three, but this is all NRG. So if you guys want to skip past the segment, a couple Garrett G clips, a couple Justin clips. First of all, Garrett in game one, a classic Garrett G double tap. Into game two, though, 
a full-on kind of flip reset. At least we think it was. Justin. And, and just beautiful positioning. Now a chance on the other end. Garrett! And oh my Garrett moment with about two minutes left on the clock. A massive goal from him. It starts with a great challenge from Justin, which kicked this ball up for Garrett. He's in the right position in the corner just to carry it down the field. Buying a little bit of time for Chicago, forced to wait, and he able to challenge Fireburner for possession. And that should have been a goal there for G2. We actually saw Justin bomb Fireburner on accident, and that's why Fireburner completely missed the hit on that one. And Garrett! Wow. Garrett this G. This was a sensational play. Look at Garrett getting his flip reset, waiting till the end, immediately wow. jumping and pushing it by Chicago. I don't even know if he got the flip reset and decided not to use it. Doesn't matter. But regardless, that was just unpredictability. And then Justin, this fancy footwork, if you almost want to call it that, I, I really could not even tell you guys. This clip was probably the best I've seen so far. Technically a 1v3 at some uh, analysis out there. Could even call it a 1v4 as well after the demo. You guys just watched this clip. Just amazing, amazing play from Justin. Uh, and played. JNAPS in Chicago leading the effort and a good save there by Chicago as well. Needed to see them step up. Justin almost making the entire team miss. He does <laughs> it and he scores. Justin is incredible. He's a one-man team right now. Look at this. Goes by one. Fakes out another. 50-50. Oh, Chicago, you're back for more? Well, how do you like that? And I think overall through week number four, my underwhelming team has to still be spliced. Offensively, this team has been completely lost. I can't say the same for Rogue, a team I could put on this list as well. I'm going to leave them off for now because their series this past weekend was very close. And offensively, speaking of the past few weekends, they have not really struggled. So this time around, not really sure what the issues are. I think Rogue still have a chance to pick up a win as they'll need this last week to stay out of relegation. But overall, splice, you take away the their close series against Evil Geniuses. They have scored four goals over their past three series. We have not seen a dry streak like that in quite some time. Ever since week one where Karma was very, very flashy. I've talked about her a lot in the show. I thought it was going to be a pretty uh, strong showing for Splice throughout the season if she could keep that up. And uh, they just have not found that ever since week one, unfortunately enough. And that's why they're my underwhelming team. Along with that, obviously enough, has to be Cloud9. I don't think any huge issues with Cloud9. If you guys watch that full series, every time they were actually scored on by Space Station, they could rebound very quick and show you that Cloud9 world champion talent. They can score very, very fast. Unfortunately enough, they cannot do that uh, enough in those ser in that series against them as well. They fall to Space Station, who's been a bit of an oddball, a bit of a mystery team out there as well, and likely our best team outside the top three currently, unless you want to throw EG or Ghost in there. Again, there's so much happening in Rocket League, it's so hard to actually determine which teams are your best outside our top three right now. So either way, Cloud9 underwhelming this week. Am I worried about them offensively? Not well whatsoever. As always, hope you guys all enjoy this week number four NARLCS breakdown. If you guys did, feel free to leave a comment down below what you thought. We have now one week left, and these teams are fighting for a heck of a lot. There are still so many teams who can actually end up in those bottom two spots, which are so important to try and avoid. As always, though, my name is Jake. I will see you guys back here next week, breaking down our final week of RLCS, and this season is still way too short. I'm going to miss it when it's gone, but as always, I hope you guys all enjoy. I will see you back here next time, and until then, take care.